Okay, so who's ready for a 70 mile per hour range test? Uh, not this guy. But anyway, here we're here. Uh, it's mostly cloudy actually. Uh, it's high serious clouds. So we'll keep things from getting too warm during the day. That's good. The wind is fairly calm. I think it's supposed to be southwest at five, maybe 10 miles an hour. So that part's good. Um, we'll see how that goes. Uh, so, whatever. So the plan is, the plan is I'm gonna pull out of here. I'm gonna head down 183A south, switch over to 45 east and then go north on 130 up to, uh, I forgot the name of the street, but it's north of Georgetown. And then circle around, head down to uh, basically the exit for US 90 on 130, then loop back. I'm gonna keep, try to keep notes on uh, how, what the mileages are as I go or the percentages, and, and we'll go from there. What I'm hoping is it'll all run smooth and, and uh, it'll be great. What I'm worried about is, is things may not go all that smooth. Um, I, I've done it this loop, the, the, sort of this loop, once in my uh, Volkswagen Jetta. So I haven't actually done it in an EV. Or I haven't done the loop in an EV. So it's for me first, first run. Um, the good news is I have several bailout options. Uh, Del Valley has a supercharger. There's a supercharger at a 969, I think it is, close to the plant. And there's an HEB north of, uh, I think it's 79, maybe just south of 79. And then coming back on 45, well, there is a supercharger in Round Rock, although it's off the right of ways. So, I mean, there there are places to bail out if, if I run too low. But we'll see how it goes. Um, I don't have the nerves of steel that Kyle has with all the experience, so uh, it'll be difficult for me going up, going under 5%, but we'll see how it goes. Onward, upward, charge. Well, there you go. Treat others like you want to be treated. The golden rule. I didn't even know this was, I mean, I've seen the cow, but I didn't see those phrase above it, or the, anyway. Okay, so uh, it didn't say 100% until I unhooked it, but so it was at 99, it said it was calculating, stopped the charge, and uh, now it says 100%. So it's stuck at 99. Anyway, so it shows 310 miles range. So let's see how that goes. Uh, range test has been zeroed out, so I should be good to go. It's uh, almost exactly one o'clock, let's go. Okay, so the 130 exit came up at 93%, 18 miles. Okay, so here we are at the uh, third turnaround, actually. Um, anyway, it's the northernmost exit for FM 971. 32 miles in so far. Okay, guys, just rolled over 75%. Um, at, uh, what, 67 miles, 18 kilowatts used. Um, doing good so far, just rolled past the Tesla plant. About to roll up on Texas 71. Well, here we are at the US 90 turnaround, uh, just south of Mill Creek. Okay, anyway, so we covered 117 miles so far, used 32 kilowatt hours. Average energy is 275 watt hours per mile. So not quite four miles per kilowatt, but not too far off. Anyway, uh, I got, um, okay, that shows 170 miles, but so 55% left. So somehow 5% needs to disappear. But, uh, uh, I don't know, let me think about it. Okay, so here we are, we're on uh, Farn Market 20. So 122 miles, I'm down to 52%. That may be just the difference. Okay, so I'm not quite sure how that'll work out. So I'm back at US 90. So, um, yeah, I turned around at FM 20, uh, at 20, and I'm back at US 90. I'm at 50%, by my 50% for about a mile. So I may have used just a touch too much. We'll see. But okay, anyway, here we go. Um, it's 128 miles. 128 miles, really? Is, is uh, 50%. 
so let's see how it goes okay guys well um, I figured out what I did wrong so when I did that little loop with the uh, FM 20 I should have done it twice and that would put me to the right level so right now I just passed the plant 30 percent so I'm five percent over so to speak so anyway we'll see what happens but I may have to make a little uh, loop around somewhere Okay, guys, here we are, 25%, uh, 192 miles in, use 53 kilowatts, averages at 275 watt hours per mile right now. Um, anyway, 25%, there you go. Okay, so that 25% represents 20, 20, I'm sorry, 71 miles. There you go. Okay, so uh, I took uh, FM 971 out a little ways past we're actually um so i'm at 17 percent what my arrival at menchie's frozen yogurt in, on the in cedar park shows i'll be at two percent so um the the superchargers are are within like 200 feet or something like, like that so anyway that's where we're that's where we're going and uh we'll see that's we'll see what it ends up being but it should be just about right. Okay, well, I didn't plan for this drama, but I didn't turn off my exit. It should have been on New Hope. Um, anyway, I have zero miles left, but uh, hopefully just enough buffer. It's right around the corner. Okay, well, that was stressful. Um, so uh, I didn't turn off the exit. I was supposed to turn it on. Uh, I was supposed to get out of New Hope, which would then take me down to 1431. That's where the supercharges are. So I missed that. Uh, so it, it said uh, it didn't have the range. And I had like one mile left on the gasometer. Um, and it was one mile to the exit. And then you had to turn around and come back. So uh, that's uh, almost two and a half miles. Anyway, whatever. I made it. Um, fortunately, I've seen other videos. I know Tesla has, has some buffer. So uh, while I was sweating, I... I kind of had confidence that I could probably do it so anyway there we there we go um oh, but it did say zero percent zero miles okay so for, for trips I covered 262 miles uh 71 kilowatt hours were used an average energy of 271 watt hours per mile um I noticed that the uh watt hours per mile went up coming back and then I realized well coming back from uh, uh, towards Lockhart and past Lockhart is basically sort of uphill so that must be what happened there anyway whatever we're all good um, oh yeah I already got 7% what am I charging at? I'm around 244 yes yeah, of course so uh, the charging is ramped up uh, well, okay, the battery still shows. <laughs> the battery still, well, it just turned uh, yellow. It was showing red. Anyway, whatever. Uh, I only really need 8 9% to get home. But I guess I'll, I'll uh, throw a little extra in just to make sure. Anyway, um, there we go. Uh, it's been an interesting day. Uh, horribly long. Uh, it's 5, 511. So, uh, yeah, that's... Uh, that's just over four hours of driving. Oh my goodness. Anyway, um, let me do a, f a, a, a summary when I get home and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so here I am, I'm home. Um, so let, let me try to figure out what I want to say about this thing. So, um, 268 miles, I think that's what I have done. I didn't write it down actually, but I'm pretty sure I took a video of it. Um, so the travel time was four hours, 10 minutes. I don't know how you guys who do that, do that. I mean, I usually like taking a break every hour and imagine going four hours. Oh my goodness. Okay. So, um, and, uh, if I remember right, I averaged, I mean, it's kind of, it's come down. So, uh, uh, from Cedar Park to my house, uh, 18 miles. Okay, so the uh, 
average energy usage during that time was 217 watt hours per mile. That's not what I got on the range test. So the range test came in with 270. So, but if, if you can see that video there, you see that's 267. It's 267 because of the pull down from the, uh, since last, uh, with the current trip. Anyway, whatever, that's fine. 270 is what the average range, the average uh, usage was, energy usage. So there you go, there's that part. So what was good about this? The good part was um, what I planned to do worked almost exactly the way I planned it. Uh, there was a little glitch in that um, I ended up getting to US 90 with 5%. Or was it 5%, 53%? I forgot exactly. Uh, anyway, so I had to burn that off to bring it down to 50. What I forgot was I had to do the same thing to pull off the other side the 50%. Um, that's what threw me off to some extent. The good news is going up to, um, um, what was it? Crystal Falls. So Crystal Falls is north of 1431. So I went up there and came back, and that would have almost exactly nailed it. I I might have had 1% when I pulled in, and I'd say, well, I'm sorry, guys, I had 1%, not, not, uh, not zero, but whatever. By making a mistake in my exit, I end up going under zero, so there you go. Um, so... I, what I chose to do to try to offset the, the range difference was um, I went out towards Weir on my northernmost uh, turnaround. And it turns out, well, the speed limit there was 55 and it's 45 in town. So that may not have been a good choice. But okay, I mean, next time I'll know better. Still, this gives you an idea of what the car can do at 70 miles an hour. Now, what's interesting is, well, wait, Ray, your current trip says 217. Well, that's at 55 miles an hour, more or less. So, um, hmm, I do have, I do have an interest in doing a 55 mile per hour uh, range test. I, I'm almost afraid of what it might tell me, though. <laughs> um, whatever, we'll, we'll see when it gets there. So, anyway. As uh, the end result, I'm pretty happy with uh, 268 is more is, is a little bit more than what I tell people when they ask, because I, what I usually say and, and you know 80 is going to show up even more. I haven't done 80 mile an hour, and, and and this loop has the capability to doing an 80 mile uh, 80 mile per hour range test. Uh, it, there's only like. 12, 13 miles, so that's 24 miles, that would be at 70, 75. So, I mean, it's possible. So, I do have, I do want to do an 80 because I want to compare the differences. I really want to know the difference between going more or less 70 and more or less 80. Um, whatever. So, the good news is, for the most part, Texas 130, uh, 45 1, 1A3A that combination worked to a large extent the uh, problem I had was the so anyway so that's the good news is, is, is that road the road physically worked the bad news is with this being a Friday afternoon there are a lot of semis out there who were uh, their speeds were all over the place. I mean, some guys are doing like 55. I came across a pickup truck pulling a trailer that was doing 53. Uh, that stunned me. And so when I get stuck behind those guys, I'm doing that speed until the traffic clears on the left so I can go around. And so I'm trying hard not to accelerate hard to go past them. Although a few times I did accelerate a little bit harder to get around some trucks just to not be holding up traffic. So, uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe a Saturday morning or something like that might be better. I, I don't know, I'll, I'll have to 
I'll have to plan on doing doing another one on Saturday. Uh, we'll we'll see. I'm actually more interested in the 80, but the 55 is also very curious. So anyway, that's 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 uh, that's the the that's where that is. Um, so traffic was a problem, especially around Austin. So say from Texas 71 on up to uh, uh, just past Texas 45. So basically, the whole of the Austin area and Round Rock. Georgetown wasn't too much of a problem, although there was some traffic up there as well. Um, naturally, once I got past, once I got South Dakota, I didn't have any problem at all. So Dakota's southeast of Austin, more or less equivalent to the airport. So once I got down there, for the most part, that was okay. Although there was still some semis that were out there. Anyway, well, and I get why the semis because uh, traffic flows better up there um, than I thirty five. I thirty five is a nightmare. Anyway, I'm sorry. I'm I'm from small town Texas. I don't like dealing with I thirty five traffic. Anyway, um, and I definitely would not use the nine seventy one in the future for uh, for making a difference. Um, Chandler probably would have been a far better choice, but I wouldn't have to get off to get just to get back on again and, and go a little bit north and then turn around and come back. It, it, that didn't make sense to me, whatever. Um, so computing the, the percentages was pretty good. Um, and, and you'll hear it when I went by the uh Tesla plant or Giga Texas. Um, that was 20, that was 25%, just past it, but anyway, and then coming back, it was, I was still at 80, so I knew it was off, but I was kind of already thinking that, so anyway, that's the good part, um, I'm sure there's, there's some people going like, oh, well, you didn't get 330 miles, what happened, well, dude, I was going faster, so the, my guess is, when they get 330, they're probably doing a 55 mile per hour loop. I'm, I'm, my understanding is it's come more complex than that, but it's probably something like that. And that's how that works out. So I won't, I'm not gonna get upset about that. Um, actually, I'm pretty stoked I got that. Um, on the other side, I did do a 30 mile per hour range test in Lago Vista. I mean, was it accurate? No, I'm not gonna claim it's accurate. But I think that got 340, 345, something like that. So that was over to 330. So, you know, a lot of it has to do with how you're driving. Just like when I missed the exit, when I missed the exit to get out at New Hope and then 1431, uh, and so I went by and, and the car says, uh, you don't have enough range to make it to where you're going. So there's there's a Menchie's yogurt shop that's, pretty close to the superchargers. So I put that in as my destination as opposed to using the supercharger itself, because it, if I put in the supercharger itself, it would have preconditioned and I wouldn't have enough energy to make it all the way. So, I mean, that's, that's why I did that. But the good news is, if I went to zero miles left, turning around on Brushy Creek. So that was roughly a mile and a half that I did with zero miles of range, and and I've heard I've heard other people do even more than that. So Tesla's really good, really engineered to handle situations like that where you, you oops, I went down to zero. As long as it was just a silly goof or a little goof, you can recover no problem. Um, not like a guy I watched on YouTube where he, he missed his turn coming back. He was almost completely out. He had to stop at a, at a uh, gas station. It was closed for a night and he found a plug to plug it in, plug in his car just to recover a couple of miles so he could make it the rest of the way or make it back to the chargers he was going to. I mean, if he was, if he was driving a Tesla, he would have been able to 
go that distance. At least I think he could have. I mean, I just did it myself. No, I think he had to go two and a half. I only had to go a mile, mile and a half, but anyway, whatever. So there's just enough range in there for that purpose. So that's the good news. So bad news, I recovered weird. I don't want to go weird again. So I, I'll, I'll have a different plan for that. Um, if I do an 80 mile per hour, if I do an 80 mile per hour range test, uh, I'm going to chew up through the energy quite a bit quicker. Um, cause I, I, I was at 270, my estimates, I'd be up around 310, 320 watt hours per mile. So, uh, just based upon what I've done, I mean, uh, yes, I want to get there as fast as the next guy, believe me. So slowing down is not my, my cup of tea. Uh, doing the 70 mile per hour first was just so comparison to other people who do 70 mile per hour range tests. But um, the, the, real, the, re the reality is most of us are doing 80. And, and a, lot of, uh, a lot of the road going up to uh, Boston was 80 on my last trip. So that all works, that that's, that's works out that way. And so we'll stick with that. Okay. Um, what else do I want to say? So, oh, and, and the hills. Uh, I have a feeling that the, that there's some elevation gain coming back from US 90. But whatever, it, it's, it's, it's not a whole lot. It's just, it's there a little bit. And the wind, the wind would have been out of the south, southwest, um, maybe five miles an hour. So it wouldn't, it shouldn't have been a factor. Okay, anyway, um, I hope that you all find this somewhat interesting. Um, it helps to set a baseline to know what to expect. I, I can't imagine anybody wanting to do 250 miles or four hours of driving without a break. So I, I, just, I just can't imagine it. And with the Tesla, for the most part, you don't have to. I mean, even going out through West Texas on I-10, I think the leg, longest leg was 140 miles. And I was pretty tired at 140 miles. I mean, that's uh, that's uh, two hours driving. I think I was just under two hours, but uh, that was a long time. Anyway, whatever. There you go. Catch on the flip side. Um, looking forward to doing a couple more range tests with this car. Um, oh, so I, 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 one of my goals, and, and I don't know if I, this will make a difference. I do have the, uh, the aero hubcats on my car and, and, and I would really like to see what the difference is if I take them off. Um, not that I think I really care all that much, but you know, if you if you're giving up if you're giving up 40, 50 miles of range, that's that's a big penalty. If I'm giving up 10 or 15, yeah, they're coming off. So that that's another one to look forward to is is a 70 mile per hour range test without the hubcaps on. But anyway, there you go. See you all on the next next time. Okay, so here we are the day after I did my 70 mile per hour range test. And I went to zero. Boy, I was sweating that one. Anyway, so uh, this guy, he, he doesn't normally do this. He's conservative. He sells cars. Anyway, uh, Tesla Model Y and 3 Ultimate Range Test. So their goal on this test was to run down to zero. And this is the uh, link. Um, I'll see if I can copy it in my video, but that's the link to, his vid to the video. So what happens is... He ran down to 0%. Um, so this guy's in England, right? So he, he's driving around this uh, relatively small town, I guess it is. Um, so anyway, he's driving around loops. So he's down to 0%. Uh, the, the Model 3 that was a part of this, he was at 4% when he when this guy in Model Y went to 0%. So anyway, he's running loops. Um then, then he started getting, uh, so there, there's a gray bar. I, I actually never noticed it, but maybe I'm sweating too much when it happens. 
Um, so anyway, he's getting a gray bar showing that he's running out of power. Now, in what happened to me yesterday, no, I didn't run out of power. I was just nervous. But I mean, uh, this one, this one gives me much more confidence that I can actually go further than, than uh, and I know from uh, other out of spec videos that, yeah, it, it, it's possible. It's just, there's a difference in living it real world versus uh, somebody just saying it. Anyway, whatever, there it is. Uh, so he ended up covering 14 miles after he hit zero. I only covered a mile and a half, so I had plenty of range. So, uh, um, and so if you want to go see this video, I'd, I'd recommend it. If you have Model Y or Model Three, it gives you it'll give you an idea of what to expect, because he, he's doing a good job of covering that. So uh, um, he's talking about gray bar. Uh, I think I get. Normally, you see a black bar that shows how much power you're using. And I'm, I'm guessing that it shows gray when it, it's uh, when you're using the energy that it's saying you shouldn't be using the energy, but you are. And anyway, whatever it is, it, it's there. Um, so anyway, you see the gray bar. It, there's a pop up that says it can't. You need to plan your next charging stop, and then it says you're out of range for any charging stop. So I got I got both of those messages yesterday. And then it throws up a black message saying that you need to pull over safely. And then it shows a red bar, a red message saying you need to pull over safe, safely, that you're about to run out of energy. And then it starts beeping beeping fairly, fairly frequently. So um, for some reason in, in this one, uh, the 12 volt battery didn't hold energy very long. I guess, you know, it's really being powered off the, the high voltage battery. So it probably doesn't store very much energy in it. But anyway, so the two things he did when, when he did run, when he ran out, one was he popped the front lid so he could get to the 12 volt battery and he rolled down his window. So you, you, you're able to get in and out. Uh, well, so with the frameless windows in normal mode, Tesla rolls down the window slightly when you open the door. And then when you close the door, it rolls it up slightly. So if you roll down the window, you don't have to worry about that functionality. So it doesn't have to roll down all the way for that purpose. Anyway, it's all interesting, just sharing it. Uh, I would not recommend to anybody that they go down to zero. I mean, if if you're nervous about it, and, and I get it, I lived it, um, it's not comfortable. But the car can do it. It's just how much stress are you putting on yourself? But going to 5% shouldn't be a problem. And so the benefit of going down to zero for me yesterday was, oh, it ripped charging back up. Now, only charge up enough to get home. So I only put in, well, I have to put in 15% or something like that. But anyway, just thought I'd share this as part of this ex uh, experience. Make sure you all have some basis for knowing what to expect from your car. Okay, so this looks like a plus terminal. So watching that video, it was like, well, how do you put a 12 volt charging in? So, you know, use a 12 volt jumper cables from a regular ice car maybe you can get some power back in to to the, the low power battery not the high or low voltage not the high voltage anyway so it looks like you can just pull this off here and that exposes a bolt that you could attach the lead to and then over here it's not much but there is a, a bolt that so I'm sure it goes to negative. There's also some other metal around here that you could attach to and go negative. So it's possible, yes. So what you're looking at here is there's a little plastic cover. It has snaps. You just snap it in or snap it out. No big deal. Okay, so that's one way to get there. Now, the way I've always heard is if you see this little circle here, you can get this circle out and then there's a positive and negative lead attached to it. 
So you pull it out and you jumper it from there. So that's that's two ways I know that you could jumper it. If you're stuck and you have somebody who's going to help you out. There you go.